deeply in debt, a prisoner of Rome, having been ordered to, to prison by the Roman emperor Tiberius, Herod the Great, or Agrippa, came to rule Judea and Samaria in A.D. 41, having gained a political appointment by Caius. Not only had Agrippa come to serve as a ruler or a governor over these two areas of Israel, also he had inherited a zeal for the Old Testament law. He loved the Old Testament law, and he had a strong desire to please the people. Putting these two loves together, he ambitiously beheaded James, the disciple, and then looking for his next his next person with whom he could present to the people. He looked and found Peter preaching. There he arrested him, threw him into jail. It is here that we find a text on this Easter Sunday. And Acts chapter 12 and verse 4 simply tells us that when Agrippa had delivered Peter into the hands of four squads of soldiers to keep him, fully intending, fully planning that after Easter he would, bring, he would bring Peter to the people. Oh, Peter, Peter, that apostle, that preacher, that impetuous, impulsive, yet so intuitive Peter. Peter, the man whom would both deny and proclaim Jesus had been apprehended. Imprisoned, arrested, incarcerated, quarantined, set in the quiet place uh, all alone. Having been delivered and turned over to enough enemy soldiers to make sure that he would be tormented and he would not escape. Agrippa fully intended to kill him. Agrippa fully intended to take his life and make an example of Peter. But he decided he would wait until after Easter. Big mistake, King Agrippa. Big mistake, and you should have known this would have been a big mistake. Because big things, amazing things, incredible things always seem to happen around the Passover and around Easter. You see, Easter really began some 2,500 years before when Moses would lead Israel in her first Passover. Passover, that night before Israel would storm out of Egypt that was filled with unleavened bread, a lamb that had to be fully eaten, bloody doorposts, and, and other things were the very beginnings of Easter at that point known as Passover. But Jesus, when he came and when he went to Calvary, he would complete the work of Passover and present us with Easter. And when Easter came into our lives, when Jesus was resurrected, when he finished his work, there was an empty cross on Calvary. There was an empty tomb in the graveyard. There were men gazing on the hillside of Bethany, wishing that their Savior hadn't left them, but filled with a divine order to go to an upper room and tarry until the Holy Spirit spirit would come. Jesus, Jesus would finish the work of Easter for us. And Agrippa, you should have known better. Because Passover and Easter, miracles always seem to happen. Easter, Easter is an exciting time. It was after that resurrection that angels would begin to talk with men. And when they would arrive there at that grave there on the hillside where Jesus had been laid, angels would ask that question, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he he is risen. When two Marys, Mary Magdalene, the harlot that had been forgiven by Jesus, and the other Mary, simply referred to in the scripture as the other Mary, when they showed up at that empty tomb that day, they saw there an angel sitting who told them,
told them these words. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. I want you to come and see the place where he lay. Easter is a day of resurrection. Easter is a day of the miraculous. Easter is a day when prayers are answered. Easter is a day for brand new beginnings and fresh starts. Today, if, if, if this becomes an Easter for you like no other, then maybe you can look around and realize today I will take advantage of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I will allow his miraculous to unfold in my life. I will allow the prayers of family and friends to be an effect in my life. I might as well have a brand new start and a brand new beginning. Easter is about resurrection and miracles and brand new starts and new beginnings. There is more evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ than just about any other event in history. I want you to realize Jesus. Jesus Christ indeed died. He was buried in a grave and he rose again and he did all of that. He did it for you and he did it for me. This makes my heart excited to realize that he died and he rose again that he might live with us and in us. Confucius, that famous, that wonderful teacher, he died heartbroken from the losses of of his sons and his favorite disciples. Buddha would die from acute food poisoning after having eaten too much pork. Mohammed would die with a fever on Friday in A.D. 33. These three men were all good teachers, noble men on their own, but yet uh, they lived and they died and they are still dead. But Jesus, uh, this incredible, wonderful Savior of the world was brutally crucified in A.D. 33. But three mornings later, one writer said he got up. He came out of that tomb. The stone rolled back. Light shined. Heaven rejoiced. Men stood in awe as Jesus came out of that tomb. And while these three others may have lived and died and still remain dead, Jesus, he lived. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He was sealed in a tomb. But greater than that, he came out and he got up. He lives. He lives. He lives, he lives, he lives. Clap your hands to the Lord, can you? Amen, 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 amen. The apostle Paul would say these words, but now is Christ risen from the dead. Young pastor Tyler Wadey, that modern preaching minstrel, told us uh, in a message I took a quote from a few days ago that the Friday of Easter taught us how to love, but Sunday taught us how to rejoice. Easter is a day that we rejoice and Easter is a day that we celebrate the goodness and the greatness of a Savior who died who went in a grave and came out of that grave Easter changes everything Easter changes your yesterdays it takes care of your tomorrows when resurrections take place when miracles unfold and when prayers are answered you come to realize that Easter changes everything. What a difference an Easter can make. What a difference a resurrection can make. What a difference a moving of God in your life can make. I find it so interesting that two Sundays ago that the atheists celebrated the National Atheist Day. They celebrated, had big things, big things going on. And I don't want to speak of them in any way negative. But these folks they showed up too late had they gotten here before the tomb was empty had they gotten here before we saw and felt his presence had they gotten here before the Holy Ghost fell on the day of 
Pentecost. Uh, they might have gotten our attention a bit more. But they got here for their celebration after the tomb was empty. After the prayers had been answered. After there had been resurrection. And after there had been great and incredible things happen. I'm just here on this Sunday morning to lift up Jesus. Uh, I'm just here on this Easter day to let you realize that Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still available. Jesus is still as close as the mention of his name. No matter what's going on in your world, this can be an Easter for you like no other. Here in Conroe, Texas, our local leaders placed a sign at the crossroads of our community earlier this week. I stood there in that intersection. Some of you may have seen some of that. I stood there in inter- that intersection looking at that sign with rejoicing in my spirit because they, they, they set that sign out across the lake saying that hope is not canceled. My message to you that afternoon was simply this. Hope is not canceled and neither is Easter canceled. In our world right now that's filled with sickness and quarantines and chaos and virus. I say this afternoon I say when we talk about the presence and the goodness of God you cannot cancel the Easter experience. You cannot cancel the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can't stop the miraculous. You can't stop what he does and what he did at Calvary and at that resurrection moment. Herod, you should have known, sir, that you should have taken care of Peter before there was an opportunity for the miraculous. You should not have waited, Herod, until it was Easter or after Easter to take care of of Peter. But instead, instead, you waited and while you waited for a few days while you waited and tarried there was a miracle that took place and Peter got up get the jail set the jail doors opened up the gates swung open and Peter walked out Herod Agrippa you should not have waited and devil listen here today you might have gotten a grip in the lives of some folk but we declare an Easter is going to be like no other Easter in these people's life we know there's some folks that are dealing with discouragement but Easter is going to happen happen in their world today devil you should have took us out before we got to Easter before we got to a resurrection before we got to a a resurrection miraculous the devil listen here we are full of confidence in the goodness of God and our God can answer any prayer and our God knows exactly where we're at you should have dealt with us before we had an Easter experience before he started answering our prayers before he started Started giving us miracles. I'm telling you, devil, you want you, I want you to understand something. We're going to live for God. We're going to worship God. And the miraculous is going to be available for every man, for every family in this area. You see, some folks, uh, may uh, you may feel apprehended. You may have become apprehensive. You may feel quarantined, jailed, and locked out. But understand something today. This intention that the devil has has to take you out is nothing but a lie and a trick from hell. Instead, understand that Easter is for you and there's a miracle for you in your house today. There's a miracle going to happen. In your family today, there's a prayer that can be answered. In your world today, there's a miracle that can happen. Let me just simply say, this Easter may well be an Easter like none other. We're quarantined in our homes. We're isolated. We're We're lonely and many are suffering from cabin fever and depression. Many of our elders and seniors are dealing with this sense of isolation. They're lonely. Let me reach out this Sunday morning and give you a great big cyber hug. I'll do that right now. Hug me back if you want to. But I'm also going to tell you that the Spirit of the Almighty knows right where you're at. You are not by yourself in your living room. Your couch, your recliner, your rocker, 
order your car and own your device. You are not by yourself. This is an Easter like no other. I want to I talk to your faith. Let me build your faith. Let me speak and preach to your faith today because God knows exactly where you're at and what's going on. And he's got his hand in your life. He's going to take care of you. Be encouraged. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. You are in the same place that John the Baptist was when quarantined in prison. He'd given his life. He'd given his life in service. He'd baptized people. He foretold the coming of Jesus. But now, separated from his followers, locked and in prison, quarantined in a jail, he began to feel discouraged and a slipping of his faith. John the Baptist that day had a disciple come by and he sent the disciple, go find Jesus. And you ask him, Jesus, are you the one that we've been looking for or do we need to look for another? Jesus told that disciple, you go back and you tell John that the blind can see, the deaf can talk, and the, and the lame can walk. Let me tell you, senior saints, it has been worth it. You've not wasted your time. The church is alive. The church is well. God knows where you're at. You're not by yourself. Be encouraged this Sunday in the name of Jesus. I preach to young families that might be dealing with financial pressures, loss of job, uh, insecure income. Let me encourage you today. God is in control. God's got your life. God's got things in your world absolutely where he wants them to be go ahead and accept the answer accept the blessing amen amen Uh, in in jesus's life uh, you find his life his entry and his exit from this world his life was bookended with two impossibilities he came through a virgin's womb and he left through an empty tomb he entered through a door that was marked do not enter and he exited this world through a door that said there is no exit. If you have been dealing with circumstance or you've got a do not enter sign in your life and you have no clue how anyone could possibly help you understand if you have a do not enter sign on your life. This Jesus he wants to walk into your life and he will ignore the do not enter sign. He'll ignore the do not enter sign that's on your heart. He'll ignore the do not enter sign that's on your life. He'll ignore that sign that might be on your marriage or other relationships. If you've got a storm in your life, he will ignore that storm. He'll step to the bow of your boat and say peace be still. If you're in the darkest night of your life, the Sunday school song clearly says it. Then came Jesus walking on the water. He'd like nothing more to wander up into the storm of your life, ignoring that do not enter sign. If you've got demons and devils that are tormenting you, if you're dealing with your own demons tonight, today, understand he will ignore the do not enter sign. He wants to storm into your life. He wants to help you with every part of your life and bring faith and peace. But also, not only will he ignore the do not enter sign, he also will ignore the do not exit sign. If you're locked up incarcerated quarantine if you're locked in a bad marriage if you're going through a divorce if you're dealing with depression and oppression you like the woman at the well who had been through so much he ignored what she had been through he stepped into her life he ignored the fact of her failure and he gave her fresh hope and life you may feel locked up at your house like Lazarus but Jesus walked up to Lazarus tomb and he said Lazarus Come out of that darkness. Come out of that tomb. And Lazarus came walking out. You may well be like Jairus' daughter. And Jesus will ignore the do not exit sign. He ignores it and says, this baby's not dead. She's only asleep. Would you rise up, little girl? I'm going to do something for you. You may be living behind the do not enter sign. Or you may be caught up in a do not exit sign. But understand something. The enemy of your soul waits it too long and it's Easter it's a miracle day it's a time when God can answer
answer your prayers. It's a time when God can step into your world. It's a time when he'll bring resurrection and he'll bring hope to you. This is somebody's after Easter moment. This is a time, this is a time when he wants to do you just like he did Peter. And he'll pick you up and he'll have you walking out of that jail. And as you walk, gates are going to open up. Chains are going to fall off. Liberty is going to come into your life. Freedom and hope is going to take place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare the work of the Holy Ghost. We say in your living room, in your house, with your family, I declare the work and the witness of the Holy Ghost this Easter Sunday morning. I pray that there would be a miracle take place in your family. I pray that your prayers could be answered. And I'm declaring a work in your life that Easter is a day for your, for your miracle. Easter is a moment for your prayers to be answered. And we declare this, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right where you're at. Could you lift your hands with your family gathered around you? Lift your hands with your friends maybe gathered with you. Lift your hands and thank God for the work that takes place when he gives you a moment and a miracle and an Easter time just like today and an Easter that's like no other. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.